Hello, and welcome to another episode of Movies, colon, They're Pretty Good. I'm your host, Travis Dudding, and today we're going to talk about my personal favorite Pixar film. I think this is the first Pixar film I've covered so far, but uh, today we're talking about uh, WALL-E, as you can see. Um, let's just get right into it. I love this movie so much. Uh, I think I saw it opening day. I definitely saw it like within the first week that it came out. Um, just fell in love with this movie instantly. It is uh, such a beautiful film. Like, and uh, I probably say that like a lot about a lot of different movies, but uh, this one, it's just I don't know. There is just something very special about this one to me, and I. St- can't quite put my finger on it but i just i'm so in love with this film so uh yeah let's uh talk a little bit about it um it's uh pixar's ninth film i believe it takes place way in the future and it uh it's it's basically about uh what happens after the earth becomes too polluted to live on and uh wally the titular character is a robot that's like key job is to clean up and he, he's basically his body is a trash compactor he can grab trash scoop it up and turn it into like a kind of, um, pretty much like a brick of trash and then he like just builds up these towers until they get too tall and then he starts on another one and then he's just doing that every day for you find out about at least 700 years one of the things i really like about it is that uh there's pretty much no dialogue for the whole beginning of the film um you get the um you get a song from i believe the music man i could be wrong on that but uh it's uh the song is put on your sunday clothes and um that's like the opening credit song and everything and then that comes into play because uh wally um uh, not only does he uh, collect the trash and try to like rebuild, but he uh, likes to find different uh, curiosities and treasures and things like that. So he has this like, you know, pretty cool apartment kind of where he has like all all his things that he finds that he thinks are cool and interesting and everything like that. Um, and he watches uh, the movie, uh, whichever one, whichever musical it is, on basically like a vcr hooked up to a an ipod and he somehow engineered it to you know play the movie like through the vcr and everything like that um and he just loves and he just watches this movie every night and you can see that he uh longs to have a connection like a human connection because it's you know there's a love scene and he's just like keyed in on that and um he's like uh trying to like hold his own hands and stuff and you know he just like wants someone to love basically but like i said besides the uh movie that he's watching and him like just saying every you know every once in a while i'll say something like wow you know stuff like that and there's really no dialogue and even when um eve comes uh and she's a robot from uh that came from space lands on the planet uh she comes out and she's just like going around like scanning the environment and she'll like scan something and then it'll like think and then you know you know blink red or something and then we'll find out that what she's looking for is plant life and um and it has to be specifically plant life because she does scan the uh roach that is wally's friend and um and you know that he's not good enough so (laughs) moving on from there uh but she's looking for plant life uh she you know of course like you know tries to shoot wally like the first time they meet and everything and uh because she's just there for her mission at this point and then you know she's going around and wally is just like fascinated with her and following her around eventually like when she does like give up kind of like not like completely give up but you could tell that she's like a little down that she's not finding what she's looking for 
and then like Wally like kind of makes his move at this point, like kind of like scoots in close to her and, you know, tries to talk to her. And then they're like, oh, you know, act, she asks like, well, first she goes through like a cycle of uh, different languages and stuff, you know, trying to find which one she arrives on English because this is taking place kind of New York area because you see the. Uh, you see the Earth, like, completely surrounded by, like, satellites that are just junk. <clears throat> Sorry, bubble in my throat. Uh, and it's just this, like, haze of, you know, different satellites and stuff. And it zooms in uh, right at the east coast of uh, the United States, basically. And uh, we're not sure, like, if there is still countries. Like, well... Now there's nothing because everyone left on the spaceship. But uh, before that happened, uh, we're not really sure if there were still like different countries because the only uh, human you really see um, before um, they get to space is uh, the global CEO of by and large. And this comes to like, this is one of the major themes of the movie. Uh, I know like the, you know, everyone's like thinking like, oh, trash cover planet. It's all environmental. It's a little more than that um, because it's also about consumerism in general. And consumerism does lead to uh, all the trash and everything, obviously. Basically, uh, Fred Willard is the global CEO of um, By and Large. And they're like a Costco, Walmart type company like you get everything there but it's like this one company that just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and it's not just um a store it becomes a little more and a little more and a little more i guess like a better um comparison would be amazon because amazon does so much now i mean i guess walmart's close because walmart does have a lot of different uh things but uh amazon is a little more take over the world E right now um anyways so uh and, and that's another thing i like is that when you see this uh by and large ceo he uh is live action it's it's actually fred willard in live action and uh when they're showing the commercial for the spaceship the axiom and they're saying like hey you know that there's too much trash like why don't you go out in space and hang out there while we clean it up and you know that's like the whole thing and then they're showing this commercial and it's just like a you know typical travel commercial and the all those people are live action as well so um i i thought that was like a really uh interesting choice because you don't uh as of this point And I don't think anything in the future, there were never any uh, live action characters in these animated uh, Pixar films. Um, And even in most Disney films, with the exception of ones that are like purposefully, this takes place in a live action environment. But there's cartoon characters such as, you know, Who Framed Roger Rabbit and uh, Mary Poppins when they go into the chalk. And then there's animated characters. Um you know, just a few exceptions like that. But like I said, that's one of the key uh, themes of WALL-E is this idea that these companies will take over and become like so big that they're basically uh, a government. And rather than different countries, we just have different corporations. And the, uh, you know, the United States is this, you know, by and large corporation now. Um, And the irony of it all is that uh, this is distributed by Disney, who is at least on the entertainment front, buying up a lot of different other corporations and other studios and other companies. And they're they're one of these like big companies that has their foot in everything. And, you know, it's just a little interesting um, and a little ironic, but, uh, so moving on, uh, got a little sidetracked, but, um, back to Wally and Eve. Uh, so they get like acquainted with each other and they're, you know, um, she's asking like, oh, like what's your directive once she like settles on English as his language. 
Um, and, um, you know, he has, like, limited um, vocal capabilities, but he's able to, like, to, like, oh, like, this is what I do. And then he, like, finds some trash and he sucks it into his stomach. Or not sucks it in, but, like, shovels it in. Makes, like, a little brick. And then, it's like, ta-da, you know. And then he asks her, like, you know, directive. And then she says, classified, you know. And then just, like, turns away from him. And then, uh, but then he's, like, oh, like, come here. Like, let me show you uh, something. I mean, he doesn't say it. This is all, like done in like gestures and uh things like that for the most part uh so he takes her to his like little apartment thing and uh shows her like all his like different treasures and stuff um shows her the movie and everything and she's very interested uh you can see and um one thing i like is that it, the robots do have like at least limited emotion and uh which is key for for this uh, but uh she uh when he does like something funny she kind of like giggles and stuff so it's not just like two like robots like being bland to each other he shows her the movie shows her like a bunch of different things that he has and then he's like oh like by the way because he had found uh before she arrived uh he opened up a refrigerator and there was a plant in there and it's just like a little one you know you know, probably about the size of this uh, mint right here. And uh, puts it in an old shoe and then takes it back to his apartment thing. Um, so he shows her this plant and she scans it. And then instead of, you know, glowing red, it glows green. And she like kind of like powers up and like a little beam comes out and like her stomach opens and it sucks the plant in and it closes. And then she like shuts down and she just becomes like a little pod and then it's just glowing like with a little plant symbol is glowing green on there and it's basically like she you know completed her directive and now she's going to sleep until she gets picked up you know i mean that's uh not too hard to figure out but you know it only happens a few minutes later but uh of course wally gets like real upset at this because he's just like scared and he's just like eva you know trying to like wake her up and she's not waking up so he like um then we get like a short montage of him like taking her around and stuff like that and you know just like wanting her to be uh awake and everything and he's like still trying to show her different things and you know, it's really sweet and sad at the same time. So then after this montage, the spaceship that dropped her off comes back, uh, picks her up. Um, and, you know, Wally's like freaking out, like, oh, my gosh, like it's, you know, taking her away. Um, so he goes and like is able to grab on to the ship right before it takes off. And, um, they, you know, he's got to like hold on tight and everything. And uh, ship takes off into space and you know goes into hyperspace and everything and he's able to hold on like because he's a robot it's not strength it's literally just you know metal but i uh really like this scene uh visually like the effects are beautiful it's so cool like seeing um seeing him go through space and he's just like amazed by everything he's seen because he's only known like trash earth you know that's literally been his whole 700 years of existence or 700 plus you know and you know he gets to see like the rings around i don't know if it's saturn or just another planet but you know and there's like asteroid belts and like all this like beautiful stuff and then the like visually uh you know pixar was earning their paychecks on this because wow it's just so incredibly beautiful and um so they finally arrive at the spaceship and then he's uh just following her around because it's all automated stuff so he's just like constantly following her and you know he's uh starts interacting with some of the passengers on the ship and this is where we kind of find out that everyone has just become like very lazy they're just like in these like floating pods like little wheelchair things almost um but they're like uh kind of like loungers i guess and you know everyone's gotten very overweight because they're not exercising they're just sitting in these you know chairs with screens in their face and wally's noticing this and he's noticing like oh that this guy's having a conversation with someone on the screen but 
the guy that he's talking to is in the chair next to him and instead of just talking to each other they're talking via the screen so it's just like you know he's just like huh you know that's weird yeah and um so he's interacting with these uh a couple different passengers and we're seeing some of the other robots on board um we meet the captain he's uh voiced by jeff garland and um the two key uh passengers that wally interacts with are uh uh john and mary voiced by uh john ratzenberg ratzenberger i don't know why like <laughs> my brain shut down like in the middle of his name uh john ratzenberger and uh kathy and jimmy and um so they like kind of get their virtualization interrupted by wally because he's just trying to find eve and um but they're like able to like experience life for the first time and like and they're probably like middle-aged at this point but they are just always on the screen and stuff and you know uh, they're able to interact with each other and like be like playful and flirty and everything like that and you know mary's even like oh we like i didn't know we had a pool you know and she's probably well she has lived her whole life on there and you know it's, it's never said like how old they are but you know I'm, I'm just going off of the voice actors you know so now we're kind of like jumping around between like all the different characters you know and it's and it's more of a blending of these different storylines and everything like that um, which is all leading to the same end point, you know, like most movies that are like that. So like I said, the uh, ship's captain is uh, voiced by Jeff Garland. Uh, we find out, this is when we find out that the ship has been, uh, you know, on its voyage for 700 years. And because he says, like, it's the uh, 700th anniversary of our five-year cruise, so they were only supposed to be out there for five years, and all that will make sense in a little bit when you find out that um, uh, basically, by and large, gave up on Earth, and they're like, and there's this like classified thing because they are able to get the plant to the captain, but the uh, autopilot and another robot—I forget the other robot's name. Um, I think it's just like gopher or something like that. But uh, the autopilot has been given a top secret directive to just stay in space, like no matter what happens. And like you're never going back to Earth. Like Earth is done. Give up. Just keep going because everything's like so automated that they'll be able to survive forever, basically. So like once this plot has been uh, unveiled – the captain's like able to, or in order to unveil it the captain's like hey like that's i'm the captain that's an order like you have to show show me this directive or whatever because autopilot's like no it's classified um so they see it and then we see you know the president or ceo whatever is just like hey you know we've given up and everything and he's like very panicky and everything and then the but, like, the reason for not being able to go back is that he just says, like, life is not sustainable any longer because of the toxicity and, like, all this stuff. And, you know, the captain's trying to tell the autopilot, like, hey, like, you know, look at this plant. Like, it's here. It's alive. You know? it. So that's wrong. And, you know, it's, but the – autopilot's just a robot he's like not understanding he's just saying like irrelevant like directive only like that's it he doesn't have he doesn't seem to have any like the emotion or anything that eve and wally have and maybe they just those two are outliers or you know who knows so um they're eventually able to uh get the plant and into the thing uh wally pretty much has to like sacrifice himself um like because there's this you know little uh capsule that you have to put the plant in and once the plant goes in there then the ship will go into autopilot and like actual autopilot not the autopilot robot um it'll automatically fly back to earth and land like where it took off and everything um but the the autopilot robot is like pressing the button and basically like smashing wally because he's like trying to hold it up and like using his whole body and he gets like 
all smashed up and everything, but they're able to get the plant in and everything. And, um, you know, they go, they fly back to earth and, uh, Eve's like desperate like she flies like straight to Wally's apartment because they land back at the city where uh, um, Wally was Uh, I don't know if it's New York or what but um, they land back there because that was like by and large headquarters and the spaceport and everything and uh, Eve's like digging through all his stuff and all the spare parts and just trying to find something and she gets him fixed up but he's just not himself anymore He's just like kind of – he's more of just like an actual robot. He's just like, you know, taking his like treasures and like making like a brick and uh, like a trash brick out of them and stuff. And it just takes him a little bit to like click back in and he does. And then it's like – it's very sweet because, you know, Eve is so happy and then they're like able to hold hands and everything and the people like get to go back to earth and like and it's basically like like you just needed someone to take care of you uh he uh the captain has that realization with the plant because the there's a whole thing where autopilot and gopher trying to get rid of the plant they try to get it self-destruct you know put it in an escape pod which is supposed to self-destruct once it gets out into space uh wally is able to save it and um get it back to the captain and the captain like you know he has it he's happy like a leaf falls off and he's like oh no like and then he like just goes and waters it he's like oh like that's all you needed was someone to take care of you and then he like has a realization like well that's what earth needs you know which like you know should be a no-brainer and everything you know um but it's that along with the uh consumerism aspect like i said before but i think another key thing which i think gets a little more muddied uh these days is like what does it mean to be alive i guess and this gets um covered in a lot of different things like westworld that's a big part of it uh ex machina uh, the new one, I haven't seen the whole thing, but uh, the creator, uh, these are all like about like, hey, you know, these are these very realistic robots or these robots have very human like emotions and things like that. So what's to say like they're not living and, you know, j- j- just things like that. And it's it's always a very interesting concept and the reason I say it's more muddy now is just with the way AI is and we've seen like what scary things it can do and we know what like what good it can do too. I'm not saying all a- all AI is bad or anything like that and I'm also not saying all AI is good but that's with any technology, concept, company, whatever, you know, it's that's just the way things are that's just humanity that's life like it's nuanced it's not black and white uh nothing's really black and white you know so i'm not gonna be like oh you know all ai is scary shut it all down just like when it's used for good and it's doing good and it works and everything like that then that's great uh because progress when used correctly is good but is like what is it helping is it helping humans or is it helping companies and that ties back into that other concept (laughs) you know consumerism you know globalization like all that stuff and the ai those combine to be one you know all of them are interlinked you know And it's like, oh, yeah, it's great that this company is innovative and is doing all these great things. But what's it like really doing to the earth? And it's like, oh, we're going to, you know, and I don't know like how accurate any of this stuff is, you know, because it's always you always hear like uh, two sides of the same argument and everything's always conflicting. And it these days it's so hard to find out what's true. But like, you know. I don't, I'm not saying this is 100% fact, but the concept of like, oh, electric cars, better for the environment, but the batteries are not biodegradable and not recyclable. So those, 
you know, it ends up being a bigger carbon footprint. Footprint. I don't know if that's true. But that concept still applies, though. You know, that logic still applies. And the logic being it needs to be good for everything. It needs to be good for the people, the companies, because the company is not going to do it if it's not profitable. That's just the sad reality we live in. And that's but but that's also the purpose of a company too is like to make a profit. Unless they're a nonprofit company, their purpose is to make a profit. And they want to make a profit so their employees can be paid in a perfect world so their employees can be paid. Um, and it needs to be good for the people, the citizens of the city, the employees at the company, whatever. Like whatever your purpose is. It needs to be like good for them. And it needs to be good for the planet too. Like you don't want to be like helping the people and the companies at the expense of our resources. You don't want to be saving the planet at the expense of the people and, you know, the economy. And it's just finding that middle ground. Like, because everything's important. Like, obviously, like, you know, obviously, like, people and our, you know, world that we live in are more important than a company. But y you see what I mean, you know? It's, it all, like, in a perfect world, it all is equal and blends together perfectly. And it helps the other each one helps the other so uh i don't know if that any of that made sense but um yeah that's what i think like the main three points at least of uh wally are um but like i said like just visually this movie is so stunning and just the fact that it's mostly it's mostly a silent film, at least for the first half. And that's something that they talk about in like the behind the scenes documentary and everything like that is that in a way it's a silent film, but also kind of uh, like uh, Andrew Stanton kind of put it, the director uh, put it like it's a foreign film without subtitles. And it's like, you don't really understand the language that they're speaking because but there really isn't a language it's all body language so you kind of do um I, so i th i think the silent movie comparison works a little better in my opinion but um i kind of see where he's coming from it's like you you can go to you know you go to a foreign language film and that's whatever language you speak you know it's not the one or Whatever language you don't speak is a foreign film to you. So, you know, this YouTube video could be a foreign film to you because you're a native uh, speaker of another language. Um, guys, yeah, I don't want to be all like, oh, anything that's not American is foreign. That's not what I'm saying. Um, I'm saying, like, you go see other films in a language that you don't understand, and it is, like, a little bit more... You're a little more focused. And when there's not, like constant dialogue that you understand you kind of got a little you got to pay a little more attention especially when in like a subtitled film um and that's what i love about going to or even at home uh i like watching movies with subtitles like that needs that i need subtitles for not like i watch I, i'm not gonna watch wally -E with subtitles on um that's just me i know you know millennials and gen z are like obsessed with subtitles if i need them they're there but for the most part i prefer not to have them on if if i am understanding the language then i prefer not to have them on because i feel like they get in the way um of the visuals sometimes and uh they could be a little more distracting and I prefer my movies, you know, I prefer as little distraction as possible. But all this to say that I like watching foreign films like with subtitles because it makes me pay attention, like full attention, uh, as opposed to with another movie that like I don't need the subtitles on and I could just hear it. I might get distracted with my phone or something like phones are, you know, 
the devil. Like that, they, they they should make a, a a new version of Wally that's all about like how cell phones are destroying us because this was made pre smartphone, but still so poignant, like and topical with the screens and everything like that. You know, whatever. I, I'm guilty of it. You're guilty of it because you're watching me on YouTube or listening to me on a phone. Whatever. Like that that that's just the life we live. And it's just nice to get away from this little screen and watch something on a big screen. If you know, it it's all screens and it's all killing us. So, but hey, you know, it's art. All that being said, love this movie so much. Like, and I I couldn't believe that the first i guess probably the first disney movie like uh, there's definitely some stuff distributed by disney that's been put out by criterion but i couldn't believe that my favorite disney pixar film wally has been like the only one so far and that was just crazy but i couldn't think of one that deserves it more you know like it would make sense for toy story to be there because it was so innovative um but there's just something so special about this film and uh I, just, I love it so much. It's, you know, it's one of my comfort ones and I'll like continue to watch it, you know, as much as I can because it's just so good. It's just so heartwarming and good. Um, but uh, thank you guys for watching or listening, whichever one you're doing. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe, rate, review, whichever is applicable to the platform you're consuming this on. Uh Thanks for your continued support and sticking with me through various uh, hiatuses I've taken for, you know, mental health reasons or whatever. Well, those are the both times I've done a hiatus. That was the reason. So thank you guys for sticking with me and uh, your continued support. And I hope you stick around until next week. Thanks. Bye.